in Christ, 2117 North Apperson Way, here in the city of Kokomo, Indiana. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we welcome you into our worship on today. Come on, clap your hands with us. Sing with us. Praise God with us. As we lift up the mighty name of the Lord.
come today, the one that we have, body, souls, and minds, all here to worship you. We pray, God, that you would accept the worship we are about to offer you. God, you are so good. We can, you've been so good. We can't praise you enough. We pray that we would worship you as one body today, that we would love one another, experience the manifestation of your spirit and power together. So let us join together in worship to our God, who is worthy to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the throne of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the saw tree and harp, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, let everything that have breath praise the Lord.
certainly want to thank you again for joining with us on today. Allow us to share some announcements for today. We encourage you to join with us on Monday evenings at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for our weekly prayer call. We pray for you, pray with you, we intercede for you and your family. And we certainly are praying death has touched our ministry again. And we're praying for uh, the families that have suffered another, uh, uh, suffered a loss on the, this weekend. And so we have you in our prayer, and we are available to you. Whatever you need, Temple of Faith is here for you. Praise the name of the Lord. On Wednesday, join us as we continue our series on the Bible. We continue our series on the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Join us at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Just uh, connect with our Facebook live stream, or you can dial into our conference call number at 765-202-7098. You do not need a PIN number. Just dial right into that number, whether you are dialing in for our weekly prayer call or our a virtual Bible study on Wednesday night. Please like and share. Like and share our broadcast. Like and share our YouTube information. Our services and our Bible study are also posted on our YouTube page at Temple of Faith. So go to our YouTube page and share our worship experiences with your family and friends. This is a time of critical evangelism. It is a critical time of evangelism. We want you to know that not only does God love you, we love you as well. And so we thank God for our community outreach fund yesterday. We shared some gift bags, almost 100 gift bags in our community. And we pray and we thank God for the opportunity to minister out into our community and we thank those that came and assisted with that effort and those that prayed. I heard from some of you that were not able to make it, but you prayed for us and prayed with us. And so let's continue to pray for our neighbors. We're going to go out every month into the community. Again, this is a critical time of evangelism. The devil will not win. I said the devil will not win. God is a God of love, mercy, and forgiveness. And we have an obligation as believers to go out into the community, the highways and the hedges, and compel men to come. Compel men to come. And so we're praying for our community. And then, of course, you can join us on Sunday at 12 noon. Sunday, I like to say Sunday mornings at 12 noon. I know 12 noon starts the afternoon. Uh, someone commented, um, you know, about, 12, you know, as I say, Sunday morning at 12 noon. I recognize that. But mornings, mornings bring newness. And so I like to talk about Sunday mornings, the newness of the day. So join us on Sunday mornings at 12 noon for our worship. You can join us here in the sanctuary on our Facebook Live for those of you that want to worship with us virtually or on our conference call line. We welcome you on today. Let's prepare to give on today. Let's prepare to give. We have giving platforms available to you that are virtual. You should see them at the bottom of your screen. You can share your tithe and your offering through Cash App or through Givelify. Look and uh, make note of our Lower Thirds, the message that is uh, scrolling across our screen at this moment. You have our uh, Cash App address and our Givelify address. Please prepare to give. We certainly praise God and appreciate all of you that continue to share in the ministry, continue to be blessed by this ministry. Please prepare to share your tithe and your offering on today. We thank God for those of you that have given already during the week through Givelify or Cash App. We praise God for you. First Lady Sandra Bush and I, we give, we contribute to the ministry. We tithe into the ministry. We support the ministry financially because we are blessed and we want to be blessed 
abundantly. So we praise God. We praise God for you on today. Praise the name of the Lord. Prepare to give. Prepare to give. God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. God, we pray that as we give our tithes and offerings today, that we all think about the fact that the tithe is yours. It belongs to God. And as we give our offerings, that we know, God, that you love a cheerful giver. God, we pray that we are honoring you with our wealth and with the first fruits of all of our increase. God, we pray that you bless what we hold in our hand. It is our seed that we are planting on good ground. God, as we honor you by giving, we pray that you will send increase regarding our finances and bless our homes and all that we have in Jesus' name. Lift up your gifts unto God, whether you're giving on your electronic device, you may be watching virtually right now and you're unable to do that. Just lift your right hand to God and let God know you are offering up this seed unto him.
The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. I want to talk to you today from the subject, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Father, I pray for clarity of thought, clarity of speech. Father, I pray for the hearers of this word, that they will receive the word with gladness. And after receiving the word, apply the word to their life, because it is through the application of your word that we are blessed. So God, we speak against distraction. We speak against worry and the cares of life. Help us to focus on your word right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, have mercy. Wherever you are, can you say with me, Lord, have mercy. A lot of times we say those three words when we feel like we are becoming overwhelmed with the cares of this life. We have friends and loved ones that have experienced death, experienced accidents, experienced mishaps. Trials and tribulations have come upon us. Pressures in our businesses, pressures on our jobs, pressure at home. When we feel that pressure, we say, Lord, have mercy. Lamentations, as the title of the book suggests, is about pain and suffering but not without hope in God. Jeremiah wrote in the light of the fall of Jerusalem, the devastation of the city and the exile of the people into captivity. These events were cause for great sorrow. Thus Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because Jeremiah did a lot of crying for the people. The five chapters of Lamentations are five poems of lament or sorrow. This is a very sad book written by a sad prophet during a sad time. I said this is a very sad book written by a sad prophet during a sad time. Lamentations is a poetic expression of the pain of sin's consequences. Sin has consequences, people of God. I said sin has consequences. And when we face those consequences, we want God to have mercy upon us. The only time we want justice is when it involves somebody else. We don't want justice with justice when it comes to us. When it comes to us, we want mercy. If we were the guilty party standing down in Howard County Court in front of Judge Menges, we would want Judge Menges to have mercy upon us. We would want Judge Menges to have mercy upon our family member. But when it's someone that is standing before Judge Perry, we want Judge Perry to be just with them. We want Judge Perry to give them the punishment they deserve. We want them to get what they have coming. We want everybody to get what they have coming except when it comes to us. When it comes to us, we want the judge to have mercy. We are the same way with God. When someone does something against us, we want God to get them. But when we do something against someone else, we want God to have some mercy. Mm. Jeremiah, he looked around and he saw the devastation, the actions of the people were experiencing because they had turned against God. But remember, the book of Lamentations is also a book of hope. God's mercies are seen even in the midst of judgment. Even when we turn our back to God, God will show us mercy and he will relent from his punishment. In our text, 
Jeremiah didn't stay in that state of devastation. He took control of his mind and he turned his thoughts to God. See, you can't stay in that place of guilt. You've got to pull yourself out of that place of guilt. You've got to control your mind or your mind will control you. I said you've got to control your mind or your mind will control you. You will be devastated because of guilt unless you pull yourself out of those feelings of guilt and devastation. So the, the Bible says that Jeremiah did not stay where he was. You cannot stay where you are. Amen. Jeremiah took control. He turned his thoughts to God. Jeremiah said, I recall to my mind. See, you got to, when you find yourself in that place of guilt, when you find yourself in that place of judgment, you got to recall to your mind that God is willing to forgive and to forget. Can I get a witness today? So Jeremiah said, therefore, since I remember the God that I'm dealing with, I have hope. It is through God's mercies that we are not consumed. God didn't destroy us because of his mercy. God didn't expose us when you were out doing what you were doing. God didn't expose you because of his mercy. Don't you know that there are some things that we have done that people still don't know about? Mm. They don't know it because God covered us in his mercy. God said, I'm not going to let them know. I'm not going to let them know what they're doing in the dark. <laughs> God says, because I have mercy... I'm going to shield you, and I'm going to cover you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. We are not consumed. We are not burnt up. We are not destroyed. We are not consumed. We are not exposed. Our name is not on Google. Our name is not, it not out in the blogs. Folks are not posting naked pictures of us or telling our dirt or, or telling our tea, as, as they say now, because of God's mercy. Mm. God is long-suffering. God says, God will warn you. And God says, if you don't stop, I'm going to expose you. Oh, can I get a witness on today? That's why a lot of us stop because God warned us that if we didn't stop, he was going to expose us. We're not consumed. We're not destroyed. Why? Because the Bible says his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jeremiah said, God is my portion. He's my help. He's my strength, says my soul. That's why I retain my hope in God. Because I know that God is reliable. I know that God is faithful. The God is good to them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh. God knows you're trying. Mm. I said God knows you're trying to do right. God knows you're trying to live right. God knows you're trying to put that bottle down. God knows you're trying to put that needle down. God knows you're trying to leave him alone because he's no good for you. God knows you're trying to leave her alone because she's no good for you. God knows you're trying. And he says, wait for him to help you. It's good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord because God will have mercy. Mercy is compassion. Hear me closely. Mercy is compassion. Or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Don't you know that God can do a lot of harm to us? Don't you know that God's punishment can be harsh? Mercy is a love that responds to human need in an unexpected or unmerited way. God shows us unmerited favor. Mercy is the compassionate treatment of those in distress, especially when it is within your 
power to punish them or harm them. You can show mercy as a person towards those that do you wrong. That's showing mercy. When you are compassionate in your treatment, God is compassionate in his treatment with us because he has the power and the authority to punish us. At its core, mercy is forgiveness. The Bible speaks of God's love for all of us. That's all of us. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible relates mercy to other qualities beyond love and forgiveness. In the Hebrew Bible, there is a group of related words that are often translated as mercy. It depends upon where they appear in the text. Mercy refers to God's enduring love. Like the love between a husband and a wife that has decided they're going to hang in there in spite of the ups and downs. They show mercy to each other. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. You show mercy to your children when they are disobedient. There's a connection between you and your loved ones just like there is a connection between us and God. That's why God shows mercy toward us because he loves us. The Bible also defines mercy as forgiveness and withholding punishment. God shows his mercy for those who are suffering through healing, comfort, the alleviation of the suffering and caring about us when we are in distress. God cares about you when you are in distress. God cares about you when your family is in distress, when your family suffers loss and he acts from compassion and he acts with mercy. In Matthew 17 and 15, a man approached Jesus and kneeled before him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. Jesus responded to that plea for mercy. Jesus had compassion on the man. And it prompted him to act and to show his love and to heal and restore his son. In the Bible, in Psalm 85, it speaks of the Israelites' return from exile. It is said that when mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed. I said righteousness and peace have kissed when mercy and truth meet each other. Mercy suggests God has a steadfast love for us and God is loyal to us. Mercy in the context of all of Jesus' teachings. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells the story of the unmerciful servant who had his own debt wiped away but refused to forgive another servant who only owed him a few cents. That story teaches us that we need to have mercy on others if we want God to have mercy on us. Can I get a witness on today? Amen. Jesus is the face of mercy. I said, Jesus is the face of mercy. Jesus said that God requires, desires mercy and not sacrifice. Before I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Jesus shows us what it means to be merciful. Jesus healed the sick. He welcomed the stranger, pardoned those who were persecuted and killed him. Jesus' mercy is not an abstract thing, but Jesus demonstrated his mercy. Jesus' mercy demonstrated should change us inside out. When Jesus shows mercy to us, we should show mercy to others. Jesus Christ is the face of God's mercy. Mercy and compassion work together. Mercy is the fruit of compassion. Mercy is a gift given to someone who is suffering by someone acting with compassion. Mercy is a noun, but it's a mission that should be performed. It's an event to be grateful for. It is the compassion or forgiveness shown to us. Mercy is a noun in action. When you show compassion, you are showing mercy. Compassion acts to alleviate suffering. It becomes mercy when you act. One of the indisputable attributes of God is his mercy. 
God, who is extremely holy, is also extremely merciful. David said in Psalm 103 and 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. When the Bible describes God in his mercy, he concludes with his mercy. Mercy is the nature, character, and attribute of God. God chooses to meet and relate with mankind on the platform of mercy, his mercy seat, his throne of grace. When you come boldly to the throne of grace, God is showing you mercy. Can I get a witness today? Having mercy or being merciful speaks of leniency, forbearance, and clemency. God forbears our sin. God shows leniency when we ask him to forgive us, and then God grants us clemency. The Bible clearly tells us in Psalm 103 and 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. That means God didn't give us what we deserve. I said that means God did not give us what we deserve. Mercy qualifies the disqualified and make the vessels of mercy to enjoy benevolence and the riches of God. The Bible says in Romans 9 and 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. We are God's vessels of mercy. We speak God's mercy. We look God's mercy. We carry God's mercy. We are God's mercy. We are referred as vessels of mercy as such God has decided to grant us his mercy, his dignity, his glory, and his honor. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. James tells us that mercy triumphs over judgment. That means what we deserve is covered by God's mercy. Are you hearing me, people of God? You may not have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet. You still have time to call upon God's mercy. You don't want God's judgment. You want to experience God's mercy. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Micah said, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Luke said, be merciful, just as your father is merciful. David said, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Green olive trees are considered indestructible. The root system of the olive tree is so strong that it is capable of regenerating itself even when the above ground structure of the tree is completely destroyed. The root of the green olive tree is so strong it is indestructible. That is just like God's mercy. It does not matter what you have done. Hmm. Lie, cheat, steal, fornicate, adultery. It doesn't matter what you have done. Call upon the mercy of God and ask God to forgive you. Yes. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. David talked a lot about mercy in his songs because David made a lot of mistakes. I said David talked a lot about mercy in his songs because David made a lot of mistakes. David did a lot of wrong in his life. David didn't always do what was right. David didn't always do what was pleasing to God. But David knew God. And David knew that God was a God of mercy. David said righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your faith. you got to call upon the word of God when you find yourself in the place where you need God's mercy. You picked up the bottle again. You picked up the drugs again. You need God's mercy.
mercy. David said he would sing of God's mercy. Mercy is everlasting, for your mercy is great. The earth is full of God's mercy. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. God can redeem you. I said God can redeem you. God can take you from the trash heap of life and put you in the top. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. He who honors God has mercy to the Lord our God belong mercy. The prison keeper had mercy on Joseph. Joshua had mercy on Rahab. The Israelites had mercy on the man of Bethel. David had mercy on Saul. Jesus had mercy on the man with the severed ear. Jesus had mercy on the woman at the well. Peter and James had mercy on the crippled man at the pool. Mary said in Luke 1 and 50, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. You can't stop God's mercy from being alive. Hallelujah. Paul said for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I have compassion. Sometimes we get jealous of others that experience God's mercy. Hmm. You can't get jealous of others that experience God's mercy because God show you mercy I said God show you mercy so you can't be jealous of someone else God is rich in mercy I said God is rich in mercy we obtain mercy that we may find mercy but when the kindness and love of God our Savior towards us appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy God saves us Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may be able to obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. We need general mercy. We need all-encompassing mercy. We need sure mercy. We need plenteous mercy. Jeremiah said this, I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. says, I'll never forget the trouble, the other lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember. The feeling of hitting the bottom. Have you ever felt that you hit rock bottom? Hallelujah. But God is able to raise you back up. Remember, and remembering, I keep a grip on hope. God's loyal love could not have run out. 
mercy when I lay down. Lord, have mercy when I rise in the morning. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You've all I've got left. You're all that I can rely on. Lord, I need you to have mercy when I give in to temptation. Lord, have mercy when I don't remember how good you've been to me.
in the sanctuary. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.